Today I'm going to be making art inspired by Echo Park Lake, which is in the neighborhood of Echo Park in Los Angeles, California. And I'm going to be using polymer clay to make a coaster that's like Sculpey or Fimo or anything like that. Echo Park Lake is over 100 years old. It has a boathouse with a cafe and paddle boat rentals and lots of wildlife for being in the middle of a big city. Here's all the colors I'll be using for the base of the coaster, which represents the water in the lake. I start out with an ultramarine blue, which I roll into a ball and then out into a long cylindrical shape. And I do this by rolling back and forth, pressing down lightly with my fingers. Echo Park Lake is a man-made lake that was originally built as a reservoir in the 1870s by building a dam and diverting the LA River to fill it. Then I roll out the rest of the colors, a navy blue, a turquoise, jungle green, olive green, green green, wasabi green, raw sienna, white, and black. The reservoir was converted into an English-style park in the 1890s, and now the water in the lake comes from rainwater runoff through the gutters, which helps control flooding. Then I take all the long cylindrical pieces and place them around the big ultramarine blue piece. And then I twist them all together. And then I smush that up and roll it up into a ball. And then I roll it out using a little rolling pin. And then I smush that up all together and then roll it up into a ball again. The lake is lined with park benches and it's really peaceful to just sit on them and watch the reflections in the water. Now I've got it in a ball again and I roll it out again. And then I fold it up and roll it out into a big cylindrical piece. And then I twist that together and smush it up into a ball. Then I roll it out again and smush it up again. And then I repeat that until it looks like water with some sediment and algae in it. And this is my way of mixing colors together without mixing them too well and also creating a bit of water texture. Now I'm going to focus on the fountain, which was added to the lake in the 1980s. These are the colors I'm going to be using, white plus a little bit of color from the watery base. And I mix the colors together by smushing them with my fingers, and I don't mix too well because I want to keep some of that water texture. And the only difference between these colors is the amount of white that I'm using in them. The fountain is just one of many updates the lake has gotten throughout the years. It was drained in 2011 as a part of a water quality improvement project and the park got a big makeover then. Now I'm adding a little bit of turquoise blue because sometimes the fountain is mysteriously bright blue, which I'm guessing is something to fight algae. So I mix all that together and again it's water so it's okay if it's a little bit streaky, I want it that way. Then I roll out three little white balls of clay and place them on the base in a triangle representing the three spigots of the fountain. Then I take a step back and roll out little balls of the darkest shade and place them along the perimeter, creating the outside edge of the fountain. As you can see, there's this area where the mist in the fountain hits the water of the lake, and that's what I'm doing here. So I flatten that out and then I start layering with a slightly lighter shade, slowly moving in towards those white dots in the center. And I flatten that out and do another layer closer in with a lighter color. And I flatten it out with a rolling pin between layers because I want it to have a feeling of three dimensionality where the lighter colors are on top of the darker colors. If I don't flatten them out, they look like they're on the same plane and there tends to be space between the dots, which I don't want. I'm adding more and more dots, trying to make it look like it has lots of little splashes of water. And I want it to be a little imperfect here because we're dealing with water. If it's too symmetrical and all the dots are the same size, it'll look less realistic. And I keep filling it in until I get to the top of the fountain where I use pure white. Another great thing about Echo Park Lake is all the different types of birds that live there. There's even an island in the middle of the lake that's dedicated just to birds and it's closed off from the public. And in the spring there's lots of cute little baby ducks and geese. So I'm going to add a couple mallard ducks to the coaster. And first I mix the colors for the head and the body of the female mallard. I use a raw sienna, cadmium yellow, black and white. 
And I don't mix it all the way because I want some streaks to represent the feather patterns. Now I'm mixing colors together for the body of the male mallard. And first I mix together a gray shade using black and white, then a brown shade using raw sienna and black. And then I mix those together with black and white. And I keep the streaks in there again. Now I make the male mallard's head, combining a green and a jungle green and a little bit of black. Then I combine cadmium and sunshine yellow together for the male's bill. When they drained the lake most recently, they first constructed four temporary ponds so the birds would have a place to go. Now I make the color for the female beak, which is a little darker than the male, so I add some raw sienna. Now I roll out the color for the male mallard's body using a rolling pin, and then I cut out its shape using a kitchen knife. Then I do the same for the female duck's body. And this would be easier with a craft knife or a scalpel, but a kitchen knife is what I had. Then I use this pokey tool to place the duck bodies in the water on the coaster, and I flatten them out with a rolling pin. Then I take the dark yellow and cut out a triangle for the female duck's beak. And then I do the same with the lighter yellow for the male duck's beak. Then I place the beaks partially on top of the bodies and partially on top of the water and flatten them out. And then I place the heads and flatten that out. And then I add a little texture to mimic the feathers using the pokey stick. Another signature part of Echo Park Lake is the lotus flowers. And there's a lotus festival in the park every year to celebrate the area's Asian heritage. Here's all the colors I'm going to be using for the lotuses, a combination of greens and pinks. The lotuses have been in Echo Park since the 1920s, but they mysteriously died off in the late 2000s and were brought back when the lake was drained. Now I mix together green, jungle green, olive green, and wasabi green to make the color for the leaves for the lotuses. Then I roll that out into little balls and place them in the water, and I do the leaves first because the lotuses are taller than the leaves. Then I flatten the leaves out using the rolling pin and add another layer, and I do this in two layers so some of the leaves can overlap each other. Now I mix together a pink color for the lotuses using a fuchsia, a blush, and a white. And then I roll that up into little balls and place it on top of the leaves. And then I mix a slightly different shade of pink for the next round because there's a variety of different colors of lotuses. And then I place that on top of the leaves. And then I do it again with a third shade of pink, just a different combination of that blush and fuchsia and white. The lotuses are great for attracting bees and other types of pollinators like, oh my god, what is that? All right, then I flatten out the pink dots using the rolling pin, and then I use the pokey stick to carve out the shape of the petals. Then I flatten that out with the rolling pin and do some finishing touches, filling in some of the gaps in the fountain. Then I take a knife to the side so the edges don't get too thin from rolling it out. I want the coaster to be a uniform thickness or else it won't be level. Then I add the last few white dots to fill out the fountain, just filling in any little bits of blue that stick out there. And then I roll it out into its final shape. There's other flowers in Echo Park too, but the lotuses are the most famous. Then I sign it on the side with a knife because I didn't feel like flipping it over. And then I cook it in the oven for a half hour. Here's a time lapse of the whole process. And I like polymer clay because it's an accessible way to work with ceramics without having to have a kiln. And there's the final coaster after it's come out of the oven. As you can see, the colors get a little bit muted when they cook. And that's it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.